What's up, man? What's up, dude? How are you? Doing good. You you got the mic already, huh? Oh yeah, man. I, I'm yeah. making it official for you. I'm making yeah, it official, thank bro. You so much, Michael, for doing this. It's been a long time coming. I know we were talking on Instagram, but I needed to I needed to lock you in, man. Yeah, man. I appreciate it, homie. Yeah. So where are you? Where, where are you living right now? I'm in Las Vegas, bro. Um, oh, you're after, in Vegas? Yeah, yeah. We moved to Vegas about three, four months ago. After that whole COVID thing I went through, I was just like, LA's too fucking crowded. I yeah, I want to talk. I want to get to that because I was because because you know that was I mean that was all over um social media and everything. Yeah, man. So yeah. we we just got out of there and uh we've been staying in Vegas. Her parents, like I got a place like a couple of houses down from her parents, and we got another kid. So it's kind of like it's perfect. It's really, let me tell you, man. It's so easy living out here compared to LA. Yeah, I mean, you live there, you know, you always feel like you're in it. For right, me, right. You're never out of it. And yeah, here, that's how I feel. I feel I feel the energy. I live right in the middle of Hollywood. Yeah. Yeah. You know, by the Kodak and, Theater. Oh, so you're right in the middle. I'm right there. And I, I don't I feel messed up half the time. Yeah, it's a thing where you just never get away. And now when I can come to Vegas and just chill and yeah. then, you know, go back. Because here's the thing. Everything's online. It's going to be online to the middle of next year, end yeah. of next year. All my auditions, all my castings, everything. You just send in a video. So you oh, can, you can do it at home. You could just tape it yourself. Oh, yeah. Like I, I'm doing a I'm up for a couple of TV shows. You know, I know Bobby does a lot of acting, but yeah. everything everything is like you self tape it. And you turn it in. So you don't even need to live there. Look, Joe Rogan left. The yeah. Vine got a place in Nashville. I just saw Red Band, uh, Brian Red Band just Austin, bought a Texas, house bro. in Austin. Dude, I'm telling you, next, we need you out here, Steven. We need oh, you Oh, man, I Vegas. would love to go to Texas or Vegas. Yeah, I heard Vegas is cool. I mean, Vegas is close, closer to my mom. She, my mom's in uh, Arizona. Yeah, you know why I, I pick Vegas is because... When it does fully open up, you know, I love stand up. So I'll be able to go to strip, just hit a bunch of clubs and not oh, have yeah, to. Oh, yeah, Vegas. Yeah, fight for stage time. You just go up, have fun. Polly Shore just moved out here. Brent Erst just Wait, moved out Pauly here. Polly Shore moved out there? Yeah, yeah. He lives oh, out here too. I thought he lived in Silver Lake or Echo Park. No, he moved, bro. He, he moved. moved about, he moved the same time I moved about four or five months ago. Uh, he lives in old uh, Vegas and I live in like, I I'm living here, but we're building a house. So it'll be done in like six months. Oh, you months. guys are building it from, you're building it from the, yeah, from, from scratch. The ground yeah. Up. yeah. Oh, so, that's dope, man. Yeah. And then, and then I have, uh, I can't announce it, but cause they're not announced yet, but I'm shooting like three shows next year. They got pushed Whoa, to next year. Congratulations. So be, you can't you, talk man. about those. You can't No, Cause oh, they haven't announced them. No but, disclosure yet. But what I'm excited about, I'm going to be in L.A. a lot. So literally, it's the best of both worlds. You yeah. Know what, now, I mean? what is Vegas? Um, does Vegas kind of um, have it? Do they offer all the things that L.A. has? And more, man. To me, like, I don't know. It's like you got um, your Whole Foods out there. You got all your shops. Oh, Whole Foods. We got we got we got the, the Trader Joe's. Oh, you got, got Trader Joe's out there. Oh, they got everything, man. It, it's yeah. it's. Dude, I'm telling you, love it. it. The weather is perfect right now. In the summer, it gets hot, but hopefully I'll be in LA then. But it's a thing where it, it's more than that. It's just the simplicity of it. Never traffic. Haven't hit traffic once. It's quiet. It's just quiet. And oh, it's wow. like right now, we live in a place uh, called Lake Las Vegas. Literally, it's like a resort. Like you oh, drive wow. in. wow. It's that nice. Yeah. And, it, and it's not like it's expensive. It's just, it's about... 40, 40 minutes away from uh, like the strip. Yeah. So I'm like out here. You know what I mean? And I love yeah. it. It's just so different. It's compared mellow. To... And the, how's the weather? Oh, right now it's uh, 70, 75. Oh. Yeah. Now, now the I summer. I had a bandmate of mine, um, Heather Leather. She was the basis of uh, my band. Mm -hmm. And she just bought a house out there as well. Dude, no taxes, bro. No, no taxes. Tax. It's like yeah. Texas. Yeah, yeah, it's like Texas is like Florida. That's why you need to bring your ass out here and set up so shop, you could, bro. You could get something nice for like three hundred. Dude, I'm telling. And check this out: the the flights wherever you got to travel, if you do traveling, it's so much cheaper out of Vegas. You know, I I'm so happy I don't have to fucking go to LAX ever again. Oh, that place is a nightmare. Dude, it it sucks, bro. It yeah, sucks. Yeah. You know, I don't want to. Like, I love LA, but just too many people. 
And then I think, you know, after this whole Corona thing, everybody's realizing you don't have to live where you live a lot of times. You just you do know, it because. You're, you're right. Because it's like everything, like I'm doing this, you're there. I'm, we're Zooming and we're doing a podcast right now. And half the, you know, do you know who, you know, Tom Green, right? Of course. Of course. You know what he's doing, right? I, now the, I saw him a couple months ago. He was trying to do his whole podcast thing by himself. Like, oh, yeah, is that he's the thing? traveling in a van with his dog, just going, just oh, traveling across the U.S. That's dope. And that's just dope. doing content, man. Yeah, I mean, I can't do that. I got two kids. My wife yeah. would be pissed if I just jumped in a right, van right, and right. Like, he's got a drone camera and shit. Yeah, <laughs> it's crazy. Now, are, I mean, if you're single, you can do that. You know, I don't know if yeah. you're single or married or got a girlfriend or not, but when you're like, my boat is, I got two kids, three and one years old and my wife, I can't just jump in a van and peace but out. You know what you can do, Mike, Michael, is you can um, travel like Tom, but just uh, do vlogs of like different Airbnbs. Yeah. Yeah. I like it. I like, you know what I, mean? you know, I want it, you know what's so interesting about social media right now? I was looking at some friends and like, like some of them got millions of followers. Some of them have yeah. 200 followers, but it's really, I, I, I'm finding out, I haven't really found my voice on social media yet, but I, I'm seeing that the more niche you are, yeah, the better your crowd. Because if you just stay at Airbnbs, then everybody that stays in Airbnbs will watch you. You know, yeah. and and yeah. it's kind of like I, I, I was talking to my wife. It's almost like I put a lot of family photos, but now it's like I got to just put up comedy and that's it. Take all the family shit out and just, you know, I, I don't know. It's just I haven't found my lane on social media yet. Well, what about incorporating your kids in your content, like doing a kid's channel on YouTube? I, I don't know. I'm just trying to come up with stuff right on Dude, the fly. Did you let me tell you, my son watches Ryan. And this fucking Ryan kid and his parents, they make $23 million a year on YouTube. And all the, all they do is literally follow their kid around with a, with an iPhone. And you need to watch this, how low budget it is. Yeah. These things have like 150 million views. I'm this kid, and this there's kid, a market for everything. Like uh, th those kids uh, shows on YouTube, like the uh, sing alongs. Oh my God. Yeah. That's, money in the bank dude i i it was unbelievable like this kid my son watches this kid named ryan 24 ryan, 7 man the, he's a he's a filipino kid and he's and this, killing it he just does uh kids videos dude they follow him like when before covid they would follow him to theme parks and it wasn't even cut it was literally <laughs> into the video they would start the next video it was so good it's so ghetto you but he's but my, killing it. i bet he's got like millions of subscribers I, I don't know how many. It's probably like 10 million subscribers. That's, but it's, that, come on, dude. That's crazy. Yeah. But, it, but his videos, like I said, get 20 to like 50 to 100 million views. And last year, he was the most paid kid. He made 23 million. The kid made 23 on million. On YouTube? On YouTube, bro. On YouTube. Yes. Yes. So I was like, I... I was like, we need to follow our kid around with a camera. <laughs> <laughs> Not only that, you know what else kills it? If you have like a dog. Yeah. See, I don't have if many have animals right dog, now. Like I got one, but Kirby's with uh, my girl right now in Walnut. Okay. But I've actually thought about maybe creating a channel for just him. Well, I'm telling you anything. What I'm learning is anything that is just one audience. Yeah. You know, a very small niche audience. Like, because you can't say, like Instagram, let's just talk about Instagram. You yeah. can't say there's a talent to have a lot of followers because there's some people that just show abs or show a or butt. Their butt. Yeah. And or they got bubble butts. Yeah. Or they got 10 million. That's not talent. You know, you just bought that. Yeah. So it's, but with comics, I feel like I haven't found. Because I have that, I have my special ablation, but I haven't found, I haven't cut it up into a lot of clips. So it's like, do I just do clips? Do I like how Jim Gaffigan kind yeah. of does you know, the whole like family Blasian thing on Amazon Prime? That's your special, right? Yeah, that's the special. Yeah. Are you allowed? Are you legally allowed to cut like parts and put it on your social media? I don't know, but I'm gonna do it anyway because <laughs> I need to get it out there. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Because 
it's a how thing people where, check that out like if people watch this how they just go to amazon prime i would just you know what just go to michaelyo.com it's right there free link you can just watch right. it for free michaelyo.com but yeah it's a thing of just trying to get out there and i'm trying to figure out this whole social media world like like on YouTube, it's different from Facebook to yeah. Facebook to Instagram. To, like I don't, I don't really mess with Twitter anymore. Like, right, right, right. You know what's crazy? Just I just interviewed uh, uh, this uh, girl, Gina Darling. She's a streamer. Okay. And you know, she, people pay to watch her sleep, dog. Oh, see. To watch yeah. her go to bed. But here's the thing. People will pay for anything. You know, there's some creepy people out there, man. Like I, I knew a girl. Can't do that. Ain't nobody watching me sleep, man. No, no, nobody's watching dudes do that. No. <laughs> or else I'd have an OnlyFans. I'd be killing it on OnlyFans. I know, right? You'd be taking naps all day. Yeah. <laughs> dudes can't do only. I mean, you could be the prettiest guy in the world. You, you only. Good luck doing OnlyFans. Nobody, nobody, nobody wants to watch dudes sleep. But let me tell you, no. I knew this girl, and uh, she's a she's an anchor. Uh, her name is Christine Leahy. Oh, and shout out she's, to her. Yeah, shout out to her. But she was t on my podcast and she was telling me dudes will try to send her money for just pictures of her toes. So wait, when, wait, wait, say that one more time. I don't think I heard that right. Dudes will send her money just for pictures. Like we're talking like thousands of dollars just to take like photos of her feet and send them. She never, she said she's never done it. I believe her. But yeah, but it's oh, weird, pay man. me money to, to, to look at these. Let me see those jacked up feet. You got messed up toes? Hobbit. Yeah. Hobbit foot. Yeah. Nobody's, Nobody, nobody. nobody's paying for that shit. Nope. No. No. Yeah. Not at all. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're living in a crazy time, man. It's crazy. It's like, have you seen that movie Truman Show? Yeah. Yes. Where yeah. everyone is in their own Truman Show, man. It is, man. How are you dealing with the pandemic? I'm doing this. I'm working on music. I'm writing every night. I'm making, you know, I'm, I'm trying to stay creative and productive. I'm trying to, uh, at least with uh, content creators, uh, we could still do shit, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Have yeah. you, is it, have you, because I feel in a place where sometimes it's like, it gets depressing that you you can't do what you love to do. Like I love traveling, yeah. I love doing stand up and you, so, that's taken away from me. And it's kind of like hurting. I would imagine it's like you playing music like in front of people. Yeah, or, or not only that, it's just going to Starbucks. I miss going yeah. to Starbucks, man, just the simple things. Yeah, it, it's tough right now, man. Yeah. And, and I, you know, it's a thing where, I, after I beat COVID, I went out on a couple of uh, tour dates and, you know, I tell people to mask up and things, but I felt like a hypocrite. Yeah. <laughs> you know, cause, but it's like, we got to earn a living too. This is what we do, you know? So, yeah. it's, you know, it's, the it's, homie, Eric Griffin, you know, you know what he started doing, him. right? What, what did he start doing? Just gaming, playing Warzone, just video games. Yeah. Is that going well for him? Yeah, dude, he's, he's doing good. Yeah, man, it's those people that, uh, there's a lot, there's a huge audience for that, man. I'm, I I was a gamer till the games got too many damn buttons. I can't right, mess with right. it. So like, you had the first Nintendo? Yeah, I had I had a ColecoVision, I oh, had Nintendo. Oh, you're bringing it back to ColecoVision? Atari 2600 oh, back in Oh, dude, you're going back to the 80s. Yeah, man, I had, I had all of them. And then I was even down with the first, like, uh madden but oh, then yeah. but yeah. then and and you know no offense to shooter games or anything but when they got super violent and when i was scared to walk in another room what a, and it's a game oh like, yeah 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 like, like the resident the, evils and all that and, and the controller would shake yeah, nah. like, i was like nah i'm out i'm out i'm done yeah, those games were like horror movies dude it was so real and scary i couldn't play them anymore i was yeah. just like nah I'm done with this. So um, let's take it back to, cause, cause you, you have all this cool shit going on, but yeah. where did you get your start in comedy? Like where did you grow up and how'd you get interested in comedy? So I, I got my start in comedy when I started the Chelsea Handler show, the Chelsea oh, Lately Chelsea show. Chelsea Lately. So I wasn't a comic on it. I was like a reporter cause I worked for E and I interviewed celebrities. Well, so, how'd you get that gig? Dude, it was a random ass story. There was the president of the company, Ted Harbor, was there in casting. It was a late, I'll never, Annie, Tiffany, and Maureen. I was, I did a radio show in Miami and the radio show was big in Miami. I did Afternoon Drive and 
the president supposedly heard me on the radio call casting to talk to me and literally oh. I got hired on TV with no TV experience. Damn. Cause they were like, we just like your personality and we need that, you know? That's so cool. that's how it started. And then, you know, I, I just treat everybody nice and yeah. how I want to be treated. And then that's how I met the Kardashians. They put me on their show. Are they like cool, I, man? Like in real life? I love them. Love it. Oh, I Really? Dude, I know I, they get a bad rap because the media and everything. Well, here's the thing. There's so many reality shows, right? But very few reality shows go on past 10 years and make the family not just millions, hundreds of millions of dollars. So wait, that wait, means the, the way those those shows have done that. I mean, they sell products, bro. Like they're selling out everywhere, like the Kylie lip kits and the, all the whole family. Everything's yeah. selling out. Like it, it's yeah. it, it's great. So when people go, oh, they don't have talent. Look, you're in the business. You know how hard it is. Talent too, you know. Well, and you know how hard it is for people to get people to buy stuff from yeah, you. It's hard, dude. They're doing billion dollar businesses over there. So you Her can say all you too. want. She she could just sell like her own uh foot fungus and people will buy it. Well, look at look at Jessica Simpson. Everybody made fun of her. She's a billion, like a straight up billionaire from her hair. She made fake hair or hair extensions, and is she's she, a billionaire she's from a billionaire. Her. Yeah, she's an entrepreneur. She's huge, bro, from that. So make fun of them all you want, but they making some cash. Yeah, yeah. So you, so you got your break with Chelsea. Then yeah. when did you start doing, do you start with the open mic circuit? No, I just, so I had a big radio show in Miami at the time, right? Yeah. So, so I was on Chelsea. I did the show from LA, uh, my Miami show from LA, but I would do Chelsea like every two, three weeks. And one day I said, I'm gonna try stand up on the show and Chelsea and all the comedians like, oh, there's no way you can do that. I go, yeah. well, I'm here with y'all and it doesn't look that hard, right? Yeah. So, and they kind of teased me about it. So two weeks later, I went to the Miami Improv. I was on the radio, I had a big radio. So I invited everybody out that listened to my show. My first show sold out. I did 15 minutes my first time ever. And what? Yeah, but because here's the thing. I didn't know you weren't supposed to. No, and you when start people, at three minutes, don't you? Well, well, yeah, but when people don't know, and this is the thing, this is a piece of uh, inspiration I want to give people. When you don't know the rules, then nothing it. can hold you back. Right. I didn't know you were so only supposed to do. So I went up there and just messed around for 15 minutes. And the owner of the club was like, that's not your first time. Joel Backroff, he owns uh, Stand Up Live and a bunch of improvs. Uh, and he goes, all right, we're going to see how good you really are. Tomorrow night, you're going to open up for the Waynes Brothers. Wait, so which my, one, Damon? Damon and Marlon. No, Sean. I think it was Sean and Marlon. Sean? Sean. So the second night, they send me to West Palm. And I know them, thank God. But I didn't even know what a light was, bro. Like, right. So I get to West Palm, and they go, look for the light. You're going to do three to five, look for the light. I'm like, oh, okay, cool. I stayed up there for like almost 17 minutes. Damn. Open it and they were, and they teased me about it, but I didn't know yeah. what a light was, man. And I just had a fun, but they gave me so much confidence, Marlon yeah. and Sean. They were like, yo, you you can do this. This is you. So Are they cool. I'm a big fan of Damon. Dude, so nice. The whole Wayne's family dude, is that dude's a legend. Damon, Damon's a man. Dude, in living color. I mean, come on. Oh, man. yeah. Um, even, um, I worked at the Tempe Improv as a food runner. Did you really? Yeah, I got fired. <laughs> How? <laughs> oh, um, my, the oh, guys that started me at- Between shows, um, <laughs> you have to bring food to these tables. Yeah, that's your job, yeah. That's my job, you yeah. know? And so, <laughs> one of the tables, it was out in the front, um, something messed up with their super nachos. Oh, no. So you messed I up confronted the, super nachos? the waitress. I said, I told her like near the kitchen, I go, hey, can you make sure you put the right order in next time? And she like looked at me like, oh, is that right? Uh. And then, and then um, I didn't know, man, she was, she was bone in the manager. Oh, okay. Okay. So, so. I, so that, it, you know what night that was? That was, uh, I, th I think Sean Waynes was uh, uh, performing too. Cause I was, I was like jocking him hard because of the oh, color, you know? I was yeah. Like, I was sweating him, you know what I mean? Yeah. Uh-huh. And and so uh 
after my shift was over, uh, I think his name was Neil said, clear out your locker, you're fired. Now, what, when was this? Was this the, the old 90s. Tempe? This was in the 90s. Oh, this man. is the old Tempe Improv. Yeah, this was in the 90s because I went to Arizona State and it was uh, Tempe Improv was near campus. Oh, yeah, yeah. They reopened that Tempe Improv and the people that started me in comedy now bought it and they don't yeah. stand up live. And that. But let me tell you, so you must, ASU, so you just partied. All Literally, all, that's a part. I, 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 I think I spent like, I'm not lying to you, like seven or eight years on campus. <laughs> Maybe no, even nine. Yeah. It's, it, that school, every time I go down. Drug, I was drugged out. Really? Yeah, I was just skateboarding around campus looking for <laughs> weed. <laughs> <laughs> like you do in college, like you're supposed yeah, to do in college. Yeah, and <laughs> so uh, going back to your, so you're from Florida. Right? No, I'm from I'm from Houston, but I you know I lived in Florida for 12 years. Yeah. What was that like? Loved it because I got there when I was young, bro. I yeah. got there like I got my job in Miami. It was 2000, year 2000, 20 years ago. Uh, you remember that show on E called Wild on E? Yeah. That's Brooke vaguely, Burke was vaguely. hosting it. Bro, she would go to all these party cities, and literally they called me and offered me the job at in Miami while I was watching Wild on E oh, in Miami. Dope. Yeah. So I was like, oh, hell yeah, I'm going. And it was just a culture shock, man. I, yeah. I, I'm from Austin, Texas, uh, where drinks were $1.50. I go up to the bar the first time, uh, order three drinks, and he's like, $55. I'm like, what? Yeah, those were the prices 20 years ago for three drinks. Yeah, it's insane, bro. $5? Yeah. For a corona, like three coronas? No, it was like mixed drinks, oh, but mixed, they weren't. But still, that's but so still. much money. But you, you, I was thinking it'd be like ten bucks. Yeah, the, a dude straight from Austin, Texas, to Miami. It was a culture shock, man. Yeah. Like the first club I went into stayed open at six a.m. and it didn't get crowded. I got there at normal time, like you would in Texas. Yeah, got there around eleven, nobody there. And they go, no, they'll come around one. So, so by is, is t I'm guessing is Florida like New York? As far no. as the nightlife is concerned? Well, yeah, club-wise, if you want yeah. to talk club. Oh, yeah, South Beach. I lived in South Beach, man. So I lived is it, across. Is it like that movie Scarface? I've never been there. I've just seen movies. <laughs> but is it like Scarface? Uh, I'm sure there's a lot of drugs there, but no. No, it's more like uh, Bad Boys when they shot oh, in Miami. Martin Lawrence Bad Boys, yeah. It's just like that. Like parties. It was insane, bro. It was. was so is there like a strip like Vegas where all the bars oh, are? Yeah, it's called South Beach. Okay, so that's where yeah. all like, like, like on MTV, that's where they would film their spring breaks. Yeah, and stuff. it was down there. And I and I was a lot younger. So I was in my party day. So I would stay like I met everybody. I was on the radio out there. Yeah, people, it was. It was like when I said every celebrity would come into town. And I just knew everybody back then, you know, yeah. it was great. It was this a was lot in of the 2000s. Oh yeah, it was crazy. So and this was, time. and I'm a huge college football fan, so I'm a Miami Hurricanes fan, and yeah. they were winning national championships at that time. It was just everything. It's like when you move into a town and they embrace you, you embrace them, and it's just, it's just beautiful. That's what it was in the 2000s for me. In Miami. Yeah, and then so let, let's keep going on your progression. So you did those things, and you passed, passed, passed. And yep. then you just started tackle. Is it was there like a circuit out there where you could just go on stage? Oh no, I didn't start comedy till I moved to LA. I've only been doing comedy. This is my tenth year. Oh, that's so not I, a lot. No, 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 no. But I thought you, know, you were like veteran, veteran, like twenty years oh, plus. Oh no, no, no. I just started ten years ago, and but I get so much love from comedians, yeah. and all the clubs put me up. And I've grown so fast because I think I've done so much stage time. Yeah. You know, but I, I gotta say, you know, like even like Bobby Lee, Theo Vaughn, like Theo yeah, Vaughn. How'd you meet my brother, man? Dude, just in the clubs. Seriously, just Was in the clubs. Cool you know? Oh yeah, yeah. He's cool. He lies to me a lot, but he's cool. <laughs> <laughs> that fucker lies a lot. It's in his eyes, huh? Oh, it's his yeah. eye. He's like, hey. I'm gonna put you on my podcast. You need to be on every time. <laughs> every time he's like, "Hey, hey, hey, yo, you're gonna be on my podcast. We gotta do this." Wait, you know, every time, <laughs> even 
like every time he'll even I, I said so when are we gonna do the oh yeah 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 it's gonna happen it's gonna happen you haven't and, been on tiger belly oh no I think he only wants <laughs> for some reason yo like you on Joe Rogan though man you like three times you hop yeah you hop because that's the top yeah Joe Rogan three times Tiger Belly zero Z yeah and I and I tell hey. Bobby like, I so you, you heard know what it, it is first at the Stevie Weeby show you are right. I put you on first. That's right, Stevie Weeby. And when I blow the fuck up, I'm gonna say, nah, Bobby, just Stevie. Stevie Weeby. So if you if you if you have a casting where you're looking for a small Asian guy, you look right past him and right now, to me. That's right. Now you're Korean, right? Yeah, you are too, right? You uh, yeah, I'm half. And yeah. I think Bobby Lee has a problem with me being taller than him. And that's why he won't put me, uh, another Korean that's oh, taller than him. Oh, because yeah, he's got an inferiority complex. Yeah, and he's always telling me I'm way better looking than him. You know, so I, I think that's, he doesn't want me in the same room knowing that I'm half Korean. Because now he has no excuse, I'm Korean too. Yeah, you know have I mean? you been to Korea, man? No, no, my mom lied to me. She told me she was going to take me to the Olympics back in the day in 80. Oh, in 88. In 88. Was it 88 or 88? Yeah, it was 88, I think. Korea, Seoul? Seoul. Yeah. Yeah. And she's from, uh, well, anyway, she lied to me and yeah. I never went. And then, you know, it, it just never happened. Like, she's from Daegu. Oh, okay. That's what's up. Um, did, yeah. Now, did she, did you grow up her speaking Korean to you? No. You know what's messed up, man, is. I'm uh, in Houston. I'm born in Houston. So yeah. is there Koreans out in Houston? <laughs> oh yeah. Mad Koreans in Houston. What? Yeah, they're, Kore they're Korea town. I think they're the second biggest besides LA Korea town. Oh, so shout out to Houston. Yeah. H town baby. Damn. But, but back in the day, it wasn't like that. Back yeah. in the day where I grew up, like you got to remember, this is the time where I lived in all pretty much an all white neighborhood and the thing yeah. I saw a lot is when you were, you know, Chinese or Korean or whatever, Asian. They would do this thing. Yeah. So my mom saw that. My mom, people spoke to her. We all went through that. We all did. But, and my mom, you know, she was, just think about this. I believe, I believe uh, biracial couples were legalized in 1960 and they got yeah, married in 19... Yeah, I read that on your, you have that on your Instagram. Yeah, and yeah. my parents started, got married six years after. Just think about that. That's Just crazy. Six years. It's crazy. So people looked at her, looked at my dad. People oh, made fun I can't of her. I can even imagine the discrimination, but that, oh. they must have, they must have gone through it. Yeah, and worse than that is on my dad's side, like my dad's parent. Well, my dad's father was racist against my mom. What? You know? So listen to this story. And I'm finding out all this now from my parents. Yeah, we always find out later anyway. Yeah, because they don't want you to know when you're yeah, younger. They, they, but that's the Koreans keep secrets, you know what I mean? They do. They oh, do. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yes, sir. Until that other person dies, and then they'll tell you yeah, all this. They, <laughs> <laughs> they still won't tell you. Sometimes, sometimes. But I found out that, like, my mom was telling my dad that her dad would pick on him, pick on her. You know, and he was like, no, 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 no. And then finally my dad confronted his dad and said, yo, are you making fun of my wife? And yeah. do you have a problem with her? And he goes, yes. And he goes, all right, we're moving. So he left his parents. Whoa. But my dad, you gotta understand, my dad has a PhD in nuclear physics. My dad went really? to all, yeah, my dad had to fight to get that PhD because it was a lot of discrimination at that yeah. time. So no matter what, my dad wanted equality for everyone. Yeah. Not just yeah. black people for everyone. So he goes, if you can't love my wife, like I love my wife, we're out. And my dad's always taught me to do what's right. Yeah. And he, yeah. he bounced and they didn't talk for a year till they had me. So. Now, did you, did you uh, grow up um, dealing with racism or, or? Oh yeah. I grew How up. How did you deal with that growing up? Like in like schools and everything. You know what? It was weird. I, the schools were predominantly white. You know, there were very few blacks, very few few Asian people, and what no about Latinos. Blade. No Latinos. Latinos here and there. Oh, but 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 you got to remember, I'm old. Like I'm, uh, how old is Bobby Lee? Forty, almost fifty, dude. Yeah, see, I'm forty six. Yeah. So it was a different time back then. You know what I mean? Oh like, yeah. 
So when I went to school, it was more of, I was the only one, I was the only Blasian in that school. I'll tell you that. So even if there were a few black kids, a few Asian kids, there was no one I could really identify with. Cause y'all right, right. Cause you're, you know what I mean? Got it, got it, got it. Because, because it was the thing where black, because all the movies back in the day, Boys in the Hood, Minister Society, black people hated Asian people, Asian people hated black people, right? Do you remember was, all the movie Hollywood Shuffle? Yes, I do. <laughs> Yeah. Was that the movie where the white guy was teaching a black guy how to sound black? Yeah. Yeah, yeah I think so. Yeah. The Waynes are the way uh, Robert Wayne's, Townsend, Robert Townsend. Robert Robert Townsend was on that. Yes. Yeah, yeah, Hollywood yeah. Shuffle, man. Yeah. So so I experienced a lot of crazy things, but here's what's awesome about my dad, even though he went through all that bullshit, I've never heard him talk negative about any other race. You know, which Not takes one. a lot. Not once. And he marched to eat in restaurants. You know what I mean? Like yeah. he marched, but he never says bad things about other races because yeah. he's just like, he's just like, there are ignorant people in every race. Yeah. And that's yeah. what you got to know, you know? And your folks are still together as well, right? 47 years this year, man. Look at that. Boom. It's it's rare, bro. When I was growing up. Yeah. Dude, I tell that's you. That's where it, it was the same race couples, you know? Dude. It's, it's couples it's, in general. That's it's a rare thing for them to, you know, there's a lot of divorces going on. You know? Well, you remember when we were young, when somebody got a divorce, it was you like, no, oh, you're it was whispered. That was like the gossip. Like, whoa. I know you're like, oh my God, they got divorced. Now when, when couples are still together, you're like, oh my God, <laughs> like they're, they're still together. They're like still now, together, yeah. now that's the big like kicker. Like they're still together and my parents are doing it. Uh, but I was telling uh, my friend this and they were surprised. And I don't, I want to ask you about this. Did your parents tell you they loved you? If you got to think that long, that means no. <laughs> later in life, later in life. How crazy, like every time I say well, it on you stage. To, you have to understand, dude, my dad was working half, more than half the time. He was trying to yeah. maintain three or four clothing stores, driving to Riverside and Maramesa. Yeah. He was driving everywhere, man. Dude, I tell you, when I tell people my parents didn't tell me they loved me till I was 29. Yeah. Normal people don't believe it, but like, you know, Asians, like they don't, it was in, it was in crazy rich Asians. We do not say what is known. No, like, they just show through their actions though. That's like, right. You know what I'm saying? They'll get you a better gift at Christmas or, you know, or whatever. Yeah. They'll, they'll yeah. buy you whatever you need, Yeah. you know, yeah. And, and, and they'll buy themselves something better. That's yeah. what, what my mom always did. She would give me something, but then she would buy herself a Gucci bag. Oh, <laughs> or something. Yeah, yeah. It sounds just you... about right. <laughs> oh, yeah, his... man, Koreans can be real kind of not superficial, but they're real. Have you noticed like, a lot judgmental. of them can be judgmental? You know what's crazy about Koreans too is they don't really support other Koreans. Oh unless no. They're, unless they're K-pop, you know, like, you know, like even even when your family they'll hate. <laughs> yeah like my uncle this is some shit that i found out later in life my um yeah imobu uh my my mom's sister's husband sold my dad and his brother a store a clothing store right hey uh -huh. do you want to buy the store so they go yeah and so they bought that store and across the street he set up shop and to, to compete and put it uh under are you serious? No, I'm not. I mean, I'm I'm not lying. No, that's I'm wow. serious. Yeah, I'm serious. That, they do. They do. That was in the family. Oh man, that's some like, shit. Yeah, like my mom. My mom is ruthless, man. Like I was, I was talking to my son because since my parents didn't tell me they loved me till I was twenty, I tell my kid I love him every single day. Like I, I, I say it too much almost. Yeah, and no, that's good, man. That's it's great. Good. It's yeah. great because I didn't have that. But you know, Asian moms, I, I'm talking to my kid one day and I'm like, hey buddy, you're the best. My mom literally walks by and goes, how you know he the best? <laughs> like, Sounds she, go, she goes, it's much too young to tell. Oh, I'm like, my oh God. my God. And, but uh, I'm like, that's my mom. And hey, was she her. hard on you growing up as far as academics? She tried, but- I already know. She tried so I hard. I already know. And it, it's a thing where I'm just not that guy. You know, yeah, academic neither were me and my brother. <laughs> but it but was you know what they do respond to is money. Oh yeah. Once I started making it, they were like, oh, good. Oh, good yeah, choice. They, they, they yeah, you made a good choice. Then, 
Yeah, yeah. Once yeah, they see, see Koreans, they don't respond. They'll respond to uh, titles, right? Oh, my son is going to Harvard. They'll respond to that, or they'll respond to my son makes money. Oh, let or me my tell daughter you. makes money. When you're on TV, I remember my. I heard my mom say that. Say this to one of her Korean friends. They were like. You know, the lady was like, my, my son's a doctor. And my mom says, oh, turn on TV. <laughs> my, you can see. <laughs> oh, yeah. But why? Why does that have to? It's so shallow, right, Michael? That's but so all shallow. Korean moms do that, bro. It's some shallow shit. It is, but they all do it. It's they not all do right. Because what does that really do? It makes the other person feel like shit. Then you feel like. Well, well, but that other person tried to make her feel like shit. Yeah, but saying, then it's an endless loop. Oh, yeah. It oh yeah, I admit. Going, man. They do it. That's their yeah. thing, bro. That's their thing. This is flying by, by the way. I mean, just oh. talking to you, I feel like you know I'm, I'm talking well, about my brothers or something. It's so um, easy, man. It's yeah, so easy. Because uh, I okay. Um, I what do you keep that. looking at? What do you keep looking at over there? Do you have a producer over there or something? You keep looking to the side. No, I want to make sure like we're we're right on time. We're we're oh, good on okay. time. We're good on time. My, I, but there's a clock here. I don't know why I keep looking there. Yeah, that's my bed. Sorry. Because <laughs> yeah, no, no you're here. talking to me and you're like, <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, what the fuck is he oh, looking at? Do you think Bobby was here? <laughs> <laughs> That'd be Bobby's weird. Like, Bob, Bobby's Bob like, was here <laughs> telling me what to ask you. <laughs> That'd be funny. No, um, Bobby's just like, shh, be quiet. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, back to your comedy. Now. Yeah. So before uh, Blasian, yeah. how did you get stage time in LA? And like, do, did you get past at the store? Did you go okay. through the improv? Like, what'd you do? So luckily when I started, Chelsea was so big, promoters would want to put you on the show because you were on the show. Oh, Not yeah. necessarily, and, and here's the thing I did is I had some great guidance. When I first started, it was a lot of comedians from Chelsea. And I did a lot of, I never did an open mic, but I did comedy nights late at night, you know, and they go do a bunch of those till you got a good three to five minutes. So I did that for about like two or three months. And then when I got good, I headlined the show about six months in at the improv. Oh, and you headlined. Yeah, yeah, but it headlined only 20 minutes. Right. But still, I mean, you headline. But but you got to understand. I I put it like this: is that uh, when you're surrounded by so much greatness and so many great comedians, and they like you and they give you pointers. Yeah. And and they're like, oh, you're new, you're green, but you got and you got stage presence, and that's the thing. You're likable when you go on stage, and that's you win the first battle. Yeah. Now you got to get better at telling jokes. So. I was going out every single night. I was like a sponge. I was working from seven in the morning to like five o'clock at night at my TV job. And then going out and doing like mics at like 11 o'clock at night, waking in up LA? in the morning. This is LA? This is LA. Yeah. So I was doing like the Melrose Improv, but any person that had like bar show, I was doing it all. Yeah. And uh, then I started getting in the Laugh Factory Improv as regular spots about a year and a half in, yeah. two years. And my thing with the comedy store, no, I'm not past at the comedy store, but I respect that place so much. I feel personally for me, I need to get to the next level before I'm past at that. Like it's well, almost you got like your own show on uh, Amazon Prime. No, no, no. But I want to be like, like how a Segura is right now, a Burt, a Bill Burr. Like I want to be, I want to be a monster. Like a hundred percent monster where when I come in, it's like people know I'm going to bring it right now. It's like people are still discovering that I do. Come. And I respect the place way too much. Yeah. You know, like I do a bunch of shows there for promoters. Like, you know, they'll give promoter shows. I'm yeah. always in there, but I'm not past. And I remember Rogan when I was on his podcast, he goes, are you past at the comedy store? I go, no. He goes, do you want me to get your audition? I was like, no. Cause I want to be a monster. I don't oh. want there to be, like I don't want there to be any doubt. Right. Like when I walk in there, this dude's about to fucking destroy this. Right, place. right, right. You now, know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So, um, th is that how you met Joe? Just just by going to the comedy store? I met Joe on Fear Factor. I was on the pilot episode of Fear Factor twenty one oh, years were? ago in nineteen ninety nine. That's when I met Joe Rogan. 
Is that is that on the internet? Can people watch that still? Uh, I, 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 yeah, I get clips all the time. People send it. I had long hair, like it stood up. It, yeah. So I'm, I was on the pilot. I was lived in Austin. I was on the pilot and uh they flew me out to la and it's the first tv thing i ever did and that's how i met joe rogan he was the host and uh we just yeah, bonded that's so crazy yeah we bonded after that we didn't keep in touch so i yeah. got to la but that that brotherly bond and like i said now we talk way more so he's like a brother now but just that bond we had back then and he's proud of what i've accomplished so yeah, far I'm sure he is like he's such a great guy you know what i mean like he's just Does a he great guy money or what Come on now. Come on now. Like, like, I mean. I mean, I can only imagine what his house looks like. Dude, they have pictures on the internet. Like, I don't want to be that dude, but I was yeah, on the internet. I, I mean, I, it popped up on my um, it popped up on my feed. Yeah. And like, look at Joe Rogan's new house. And I was Killing like, oh it. my dude. But you know what? Some people like hate on people, but I'm I, not hating. That's inspiring to me. Like, damn, dude. he did that through his podcast podcast but Dude, you gotta talking. remember talk and the thing is he's so good though he's oh i so know good. i look up to him dude i i love like when i say like i will go to the wall for joe rogan like yeah. what he's done for me and just the three times it put me on it, it's put me hey, on well, a different like, level. Like, i'm glad you brought that up what does that do to one's social status or profiling once Dude, you're on the joe i i've always wondered that after I what does that on, do to you after I went on uh, the first time, I remember this is when you were flying plays. People would come out to your shows. Like yeah. literally, he will sell your show out. Just like, him. Just him mentioning you're going to be somewhere. It's sold out because of him. Or you move a lot of tickets. You know just what I mean? Just through his podcast and Jamie saying something at the end or Dude, in on the description or something. Anything, man. Jamie kills it over there too. Yeah. They really. Here's the thing is they really look out for the comics and everybody. Like, that's why people love the show. And that's why it's gotten big because he knows his audience so well. And that's what I was telling you at the beginning of the podcast. Like, I haven't found, like, I know my, it's weird because my audience is, because I see the numbers, like 65% women to 35% men. Like a lot- women? Oh yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. I, have, I have like 3% women. No way. <laughs> Well, this podcast is gonna suck dick on your show. <laughs> well, maybe you'll oh, get some I'm new sorry, female. I'm sorry. I gotta go. <laughs> I mean, I mean, look at my place. It's like Huey's Playhouse of this motherfucker. I thought, you, I, thought you gonna say, this motherfucker. I thought you were gonna say, I'm sorry, man. You got oh, I gotta it's go. Like, I'm like, it's like Pee-wee's Playhouse. No, but it's fine. Yeah, You're a good looking okay. dude. No, but you got to remember, I was on the radio. I was on entertainment news. Yeah. That gives more female, you know, but like when Joe Rogan, I got a lot of male fans because yeah. of Joe Rogan. Like it's more of the softer dudes. Yeah. <laughs> um, now, did your Instagram just boost up? Dude, so. Like, the three what times, was that like? So before I started Rogan, I was like, like, and I'm not huge on Instagram right now, but I was at like 35,000 and he got me to like 80. Uh, after three shows. What the fuck? Really? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wait, wait, say those numbers again. You're at 35 and he got 35,000. So 35,000 after the first time I did it, it, it went up some crazy number, like 15,000 people. And then just, just, you know, cause people, here's the thing about Rogan, you'll get that pig pop the first day, but then a month you're getting new follows for that whole month. Cause people go back and listen to the podcast. You know what I mean? And I then still look up his clips. Yeah. I mean, you I never know. Old shit. You never know. And then if you say something topical on a show, then that clip just goes viral. You oh, know what I mean? Wow. So like I've been on a show a couple of times on a Monday when the fights are on the weekend and he hasn't done a podcast and I'll watch the fight. My thing is I prepare. I watch the fight just to make sure if it comes up, I can say something. And I put the, Hey, I don't know shit about this, but I saw this and He'll talk about it because he's a professional at it and he knows what he's saying. So him just talking about the fight will go viral. And it's just you sitting there going, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah. So people. <laughs> no, when the okay, show, okay, no, yeah, while yeah. this is happening in your mind, is it like cha-ching, cha-ching? <laughs> no, because. Like, no, like- because. 
Because when I'm there, I'm so nervous. I'm so nervous, not of him. I'm nervous. Can I keep content coming out of my mouth for that long? Because the first time, because you don't want to be the dude to go on a show. And after 30 minutes, he's like, all right, man. Well, thanks for stopping. Yeah, yeah. Now, do you think people like get nervous before they go on? I mean, you, oh, have, yeah. you, you would have to, right? I mean, it's like going on. I mean, it's not like it's going on the biggest podcast on the, in the world. So what kind of mental trips do you have to like Dude, huddle over? I was calling all my friends that were, I call Eric Griffin. I called uh, Jesse. Well, uh, Jesse, I, I can't say it. Paul, what, what's the comedian's name? Jesse, she's a female. Jesse, Paul. Oh my God, I'm blanking on her last name. But she's very funny. I called her. I called like three or four people. That was, and I go, I'm so nervous yeah. that I won't even make it an hour. You know, because you don't like, what if, what if, because I'm like, literally I was saying, because I'm not like an alpha dude. I don't yeah. hunt. I don't drink. What are we going to talk about? And I was freaking out. And Was your, were your hands getting sweaty? No, no, oh. no. But mentally, you're just like, am I going to be good enough to be on this podcast? And I say that every time because you just don't know. Yeah. But I did, I, I, I and I'm not going to say, I did learn a lot about you learn what Joe likes when you do it enough. And now I feel when I go back, I I know what he likes on his podcast. Yeah. He just wants you to be knowledgeable. You know, about, it could be everything. About yeah, where if like, it's the greatest thing you can do on Joe Rogan is give him a fact he doesn't know. Right, and, and then Jamie, too, man. That and guy then, knows a lot about everything. And then Jamie will look it up on the board. And then you're talking. <laughs> So that I start like when I go on, dude, that week or a week and a half, and it may be like I'm crazy, but I read everything, I research yeah. stuff. Like you sleep I'm, at all? I wouldn't be able to sleep. <laughs> it's like it's like a test. I'm like cramming yeah. for the test. I remember I was on there and I told them that um <clears throat> hippos kill more people a year than all the animals combined. And you and he was like, You just no, brought fuck. that up randomly. No, because I was reading it yeah. because I was researching and yeah. it shocked me that if you combine all the animals in the world, all of them, yeah. hippos kill more people a year, just hippos That's kill more crazy. people than all those animals. And Joe didn't believe it. And I was like, oh, this is Jamie, put it up. And we looked it up. And oh. here's another fact. They're vegetarians. That means they're just killing people for fun. Yeah, like they don't even, yeah. They're not even, they're not caring. They're, this is just like a vegan that's just that gave going you like on a 20, rampage. 30 minutes of solid material right there. Dude. You're like, boom. And that's what, and that's what I do. When I go on, I talk about my, like when I did my Corona episode with him, I, that, that was, was I just, good, that was a good one, by the way. I, I, I checked that one out. Yeah. Oh, thanks man. Yeah, well, I really felt that one. Yeah, dude, dude, it was rough, but it's a thing where that one I didn't have to prep because I knew what it was going to be yeah. about, and we talked. I'm about glad it you brought that up because man, yeah. this, this this flew by. By the way, like, are we done already? We're almost done. Well, oh, we could shoot. go a little longer though because I want to talk about the Corona thing because it's like back in the news and oh yeah, you know, with the oh, masks yeah. and everything. Like, yeah, how did you get it and like what did it do to you, man? Like, how did well, you deal with that? Well, I was in New York City. Yeah, uh, and then I came home, and seven days after I got back from New York. It hit me. So I'm thinking, I got because I did shows at Gotham Comedy Club, and I'm thinking I got it somewhere in New York because you got to remember, nobody knew about it. Right. You know, so nobody really had masks. There was, when I got it, less than 100 people died from it. Yeah. So it, it was news, but it wasn't really like everybody wear a mask and everybody stay at home. It right, was kind of like, right. Do your own thing and we'll see how this works out. And then at that time you had Trump on there saying it's going to go away. Right. Not that I believe him, but that was the narrative is, oh, you don't need to wear a mask yeah. because we need to save the mask for the doctors and all that stuff. Yeah, so I remember that. Yeah. I come home. <clears throat> I get it. Uh, How'd you know you had it? Dude, I couldn't breathe. Literally. I was like uh, uh, gasping for air. You couldn't breathe. I was gasping for air. My wife had to call 911 and this is how early it was. Nine nine one one operator was like, uh, you got to get him out of the house, put him in the front yard. <laughs> so literally, I'm laying in my front yard gasping for air because I can't be around my family waiting for an ambulance. It was bananas, what? bro. So it was how bananas. did you recover from that, man? So I get to the hospital. Um, 
they tell me I got Corona. I mean, they, they got to take a test, but they're pretty sure I got it. And then they just said, you know, we'll know in two days if you're going to make it or not. And that's when that shit all fell. Like, you know, they said, I remember when I said, am I going to make it? And they go, we'll try our best. Like that was the moment where it's like, that's where I, I mean, just broke what that. What were you going through mentally when they say some shit like that? Well, here's what's so interesting is when they took me to the ICU, I was the only person in there. <laughs> you were uh, the only one? I was the first one there with uh, Corona. So it was a blessing that everybody's attention was on me. And I was health, like physically I was healthy. So they could use a lot of stuff on me to try out because they didn't know. Yeah. So anything hydroxychloroquine, they tried it for a day. I had a bad reaction to it. They tried the malaria drug. I mean, they were giving me everything. And it was, it was so, I, I was hurting so bad, a headache, not just a headache. It was a migraine times uh, a thousand. Like I felt yeah. like my head was going to explode my body. I couldn't move. Were you taking still... Advil or uh, ibuprofen? Oh no, they, everything was shots, man. It was like, Oh, you're they... getting shots. Yeah. And here's what's crazy. The pain was so bad that the second night I really thought I was going to die, but I also was hallucinating because you hallucinate too, that it, it almost felt like it wasn't real. Damn. Like you're like, you're like, this can't be really happening. So I was in a dream state and I wasn't eating. It, it, it was, it was, dude, it was so, I, it's just a blessing being here talking to you, oh, to be God honest. God bless. I mean, look, I mean, you made it out and you look healthier than ever, man. Yeah. And so eight days in the ICU and yeah. then, uh, and then you it took a, when did you start getting your breath back? Man, I just started feeling a hundred percent probably about a month ago. So I, I had one of those long hauls. You know, wow. like it was like six months where it kind of messed with me, Brian. It, yeah. Now, are you, do you have a natural immunity to it now? Is that they say I do. They did. Like, like they're trying to figure it out, but they said I have long immunity. So I'm good for like a year, year and a half. Yeah, I'm so, sure you are. Yeah. Because I had it so bad, man. But that's so uh, crazy. But you know, one, the positive, you know, when you, here's what's, here's what's interesting. A lot of people's lives end like that. And they don't get to reflect at all. Me, the great thing about it is I was in a lot of pain, but I did get to reflect. Were you, you know, I about get your wife and your kids? And my your wife, kids? my kids. And then you think about your life and you think about, did, did you make the right moves? Did you make, right, did you treat right. people right? And I was happy to say that as far as me treating other people right, I was very excited that that did happen. Yeah, you know, like you did, I, I didn't go, I couldn't go back and say, well, I fucked them over. It was like, I was a good dude and I treated yeah. everybody like I wanted to be treated. The saddest part that crushed me until I knew I was going to make it is like, kids. kids, like they will never know the man I truly was. Damn, you know, and that's- do some mental trips, man. Man, and that was the hardest thing because yeah. my wife can tell them, but they won't get to experience it. How did she they, deal with it? Dude, she was, she was a mess. Like was I told she, my parents the real story when I was in there, like, hey, I might not make it, but like every day she was calling my mom. She couldn't talk to me. No one can see me. Like you literally die alone in there. Like if yeah. you die, you die alone because yeah. it's so contagious. You're quarantined and everything. You're mom. quarantined. So my wife was calling the nurses. She was calling my mom. My mom was calling the nurse. Now I told my parents how serious it was where I might not make it, but I never told my wife because I didn't want her to worry. Because she had two folks, kids. How, how are your folks responding to this? Oh, they were scared. This was the first time I ever told my parents I'm scared. And, and they, they were scared that you said that. Because <clears throat> they know that that's not how I talk. Right, right. So right. that's when my dad said he lost it and started calling a hospital. My mom started calling a hospital. My wife started calling a hospital. Oh, my God. Dude. Hey, but hey, let's keep it positive. You made it out. Yeah, I made it out. And, and Bobby Lee house, still won't. You live in a new house in Vegas, in, uh, in uh, Nevada. That's right. Yeah. I, met, I beat Corona and Bobby Lee Corona, still won't put. You're that dude. I just remember that time period. It's like, because I didn't really know about you like that. But then yeah. your name started popping up. I'm like, oh, who's Michael Yo? And then yeah. I started looking you up and I'm like, oh, okay. He's a comedian. And I, then I started like getting familiar to who you were. Yeah. And yeah. you know what? And I've been, I, I beat Corona and Bobby Lee still won't have me on this podcast. <laughs> How fucked up is that? 
Like I almost died. Hey, let's call him out right now. Hey, Tiger Belly. Tiger What's Belly. Up, man? You got to get my man Michael Yo. He's a good dude. Thank you, Tiger Belly. Uh, get him on ASAP. Yeah, he's not going to listen. He's scared, man. He's yeah, scared. One thing you got to know about my brother, man. He's crazy. He's a hamster wheel turning at all times. Tell me about it. Tell me about it. But You could be he, talking to him. He could be looking at you, but then he's thinking about a video game. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, he's like, uh-huh, yeah. Sounds good, buddy. But then, yeah. Hey, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Yeah, all right. Yeah, we'll all do right. it. We'll yeah. do it. Yeah. We'll do yeah. it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> We'll do yeah. it. No, yeah, man. No, yeah. no, we got it. I got it. But, and then he'll grab my hand and goes, you are so good looking. <laughs> oh, man. Hey, um, but, hey, you're all, hey, I'm putting this out there. You're always welcome here. Thank always. you. Thank And you got to do my part two. Look, this is this is a record for Zoom. Usually I'm going to be honest with you, Michael. My uh -huh. Zooms are 45. Oh, dude, my We're bad. We're at an we, hour. We're at an we hour. We got to go. We got to go, man. We got to go. We're going to so do it again sometime. Part two, part three. But first, I mean, lastly, I want to promote, I want people to know where they can watch your special, your Instagram and okay. all your, um, your website and all that stuff. Go ahead. So the big, the biggest thing for me is watch the special Blasian. Just go to michaelyo.com and the, please leave a comment. Just leave a comment on the special. Mm -hmm. And the other thing, I do this uh, podcast called Morning Yo. It's on my Facebook page, and then I put it out there. So be a part of the Facebook fam. Another thing, hit me up on Instagram. What about Michael the Yo. Michael That's Yo it. Show? Oh, the Michael Yo Show was a different podcast. Yeah. But I, I, I just changed it to the Morning Yo like yesterday. Okay, so <laughs> let, let people know that. Because I, I wrote down the Michael Yo Show. Yeah, Michael Yo show is now the morning yo, and I do it in the mornings. So it's so, the morning yo. It's a new. It's a change, everyone. It's yeah, called same the morning yo. Yes, and but Blazing is the special, and I'm asking all your people just to go there and give it some stars and give yeah. it some love. That's it. Um, what about your um a website and your social media and all that? michaelyo.com and then instagram at michael yo and that's it everything's at michael yo i got in early so okay, i'm at michael okay, yo and everything good good, good. hey yeah. man i wish you the best man and hopefully i can catch one of your shows when all this is over man and uh yeah yeah, yeah. and then when i'm in the la i'll hit you up we need to grab some uh korean barbecue or something i'm down i'm down for it 100 percent, man it. yeah and we didn't even talk about korean food man see now yeah well well we i know gotta, we've we already talked about that kimchi Oh man, do, do you do you still get the kimchi? I fuck with kimchi, dude. I fuck. Dude, with where do you get it from? K Town. K Town, you get it. I get See, a good I, jar of it. Yeah, I eat it. Oh, like you do the. I love oh. it. I eat it up like M and M's. Yeah, you do I'll it old school. Oh, with nothing, I'll just like open the fridge and just. just Can I tell you? Up and put it in my mouth. You know, I gave my mom Corona, and uh, she said, <laughs> she said uh, she she got it, and after I beat it, she said I beat in one day. Kimchi. Yeah, kimchi. <laughs> so you heard it first on the Steve Weeby show. Kimchi can cure all. <laughs> That's right. All right. I know we gotta go. I know yeah, we gotta okay. go. Um, I really thank you for your time, Michael. Tell all right, the bro. family I said hello and um, all right. I'll catch you on the um next time. Okay, cool, man. Okay, Have a great man. one. Peace. All right, later. Mm -hmm. All right, so I'm so, this ran longer than our our typical Zoom. I'll, I'll just I'm gonna blurt out the my my um my shout outs real quick. Um, we do have a Patreon attached to the show. The newest patrons as of now are Matthew, Kaylor, uh, Corey Lee, Davies, James Briscoe, and Gilbert Marquez. Welcome. Um, if you want to become a patron to help support this podcast, go to patreon.com slash Stevie Weeby. All my music's at stevieweeby.bandcamp.com. Uh, my Instagram is Instagram slash Q-U-A-N-G-O-U. My website is stevieweebyshow.com. Just know if you get a shirt, it might, it's going to be delayed because of the uh, COVID I'm eight songs into my concept album. I'm having a good time creating it every night, making beats, um, writing. Um, 
I'm sure y'all will, will enjoy it once it's done. The newest music video right now is The Pod in Which We Travel. That's on my YouTube, youtube.com slash Stevie Weeby. There is no Little Ray's world. He's um, out there near the Zeta Reticuli constellation. But he is, I heard, I heard it from the grapevine that he is on one or two songs on this new album. He said that he snuck them in there somehow, okay? Um, if you wanna send any of your packages, send all your stuff too, cause I do have a PO box. 1425 North Cherokee Avenue, PO box 1391, LA, California, 90093. With that being said, thanks for tuning in. Tune in next week, keep tuning in for the content and interviews and all that good jazz. Love y'all. Peace.